Welcome to Main Street Living. The Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod invites you to join us in worshiping our Lord. Rev. Kent Borglum brings us today's message, Potter, Clay, and Tough Love. Rev. Borglum will lead us in worship after our opening hymn. begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have said, by what we have done, excuse me, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved you, our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he, become, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 64 and serves as the basis for today's message. The prophet Isaiah writes, O oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you, as when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil, Come down to make your, ma your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. Since these ancient times no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. 
you come to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continued to sin against them, you were angry. How then can we be saved? All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all of our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind our sins sweep us away. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you, for you've hidden your face from us and made us to waste away because of our sins. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be angry beyond measure, O Lord. Do not remember our sins forever. O look upon us, we pray, for we are all your people. Thus endeth our text. Our gospel reading for this morning is from the Gospel according to Mark, the 11th chapter. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Tell him, the Lord needs it, and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that colt? <coughs> they answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the field. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Thus endeth our text. We confess together our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
grace, mercy, and peace to you this morning from God the Father and from our crucified and risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. One of the hardest things to practice is tough love. When someone is going in the wrong direction, we try as hard as we can to warn them and to stop them. Sadly, though, there are times when we have to let them find out the hard way that what they're doing not only harms others, but also harms them. On top of that, not only do we struggle with this, but God does as well. He showed his people what is good in his law. He warned them through the prophets when they wandered, but they kept going farther and farther away from him and his ways. Eventually, he let them go. Our text calls God our Father and our Redeemer. It's a call for him to return to help his people after he let them go their own way. And it asks God to open the heavens, to forgive, and to aid his people. To get a better understanding of to get a better understanding of where Isaiah is coming from in our reading, we need to go back a few verses from before our morning's text. Three verses earlier, Isaiah describes what God does. He says, Why, O Lord, do you make us wander from your ways and harden our hearts so that we do not revere you? Those two statements are interesting. The first one says that there are times when God makes his people wander away from him. In the well-known Isaiah 53, 6 verse, it says, We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. There comes a time when God lets us, and even makes us, wander from him, even as a sheep wanders from its shepherd, and a prodigal son takes his inheritance and runs from his father. There are also times when God hardens our hearts. He makes it so that we hear his word, but we don't listen to it, or we just refuse to obey it. It seems strange, doesn't it, that God would do this to his people? Isaiah even asks, why, O Lord? You would think that if only God would open the heavens and show us his power, then his people would follow his ways. There are many examples, you know, throughout Israel's history when God had to practice tough love. Nearly the entire time, in fact, that Israel was in the desert, they complained and grumbled against God. So he let them wander for 40 years. After the Israelites were delivered from Egypt, and they had arrived at Canaan, the Promised Land. The book of Judges says that there were about 40 years when the Israelites would still continue to serve God. Then they forgot about God's deliverance. Eventually, God hardened their hearts until things got so bad that they cried out to him for help. Again. It was also that way during Isaiah's lifetime. In chapter 6, God asked, Whom shall we send, and who will go for us? Isaiah answered enthusiastically, Here I am, send me. So God sent Isaiah, and he preached to the people that God had caused to wander and whose hearts God was hardening. God even gave his people some of the most God-fearing kings at this time in Israel's history, Hezekiah and Josiah. But the people wandered from God anyway to serve the Baals. The Baals were some of the false gods in that day. The Israelites detested God's commandments and they rejected Isaiah's call for repentance until the day when God's judgment came upon them and they were taken away into exile into Babylon. Is God making us wander from his ways and hardening our hearts today? At times I think that that's exactly what's happening. You know, today a lot of people say that they're Christians but yet so often they do what they want to and they don't listen at all to what God has to say in his word, in the Bible. We could pick any of the commandments. We sin against all of them and oftentimes without even thinking about it. With regard to the second commandment, for example, you know, it's become so common to hear God's name misused on TV, the movies, the music, even at home, that our children curse and swear without even thinking about it and sometimes without even realizing it. How about the third commandment? 
Many people want to want their worship service to be only done according to their taste, their preferences, their format, their, their time of the day. Fifth commandment, God calls us to value all human life, but it's increasingly devalued in our society from conception until old age. Even in the sixth commandment, God calls us to sanctify marriage as one of his greatest gifts, yet society keeps moving the marriage relationship farther and farther away from what God had intended. The other commandments, they too are dishonored or ignored in our society. Sin is rampant around the world today. God's word is still taught in our midst, and we believers have a sense of what's right and wrong, but at the same time we have a desire for freedom from God in his ways. Yes, God had to practice tough love with his Old Testament people, and I think he still does. Verse 1 of our reading this morning has that cry, Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. When we fall into sin, eventually it makes us see that we need God, his forgiveness and his help. We begin to long for him, just as the prodigal son remembered his father's goodness when he was in that faraway land feeding the pigs. We also begin to see that our deeds were very bad. Verse 6 of our reading that's a confession of sin. Verse 6 says, All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all of our unrighteous, excuse me, all of our righteous acts are like filthy rags. This is a realization here that we have dug ourselves into a great big hole and that we deserve God's punishment. Yet God's people still have hope. We see this in verses 8 and 9. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be angry beyond measure. Do not remember our sins forever. Look upon us, for we are all your people. There is a realization in these words that God hardened our hearts and he made us go astray for a reason. And that reason was so that we would return to him. He is still our father. He still loves us. And he wants to forgive us. That's how it was for Israel. The last verses of this chapter, 64, tell of the time when the Babylonians came and destroyed the country and took the people into exile. Isaiah didn't see that day himself, but he already describes how that people felt, how the people felt when it happened. As they watched their cities being burned and plundered, when their heads were shaved and they were marched into exile, when they sat in captivity in Babylon, they saw just how far they had wandered from God and how far their hearts were against God and his prophets. They cried out to the Lord for help, and he helped them again. They began to prosper in Babylon, and after 70 years, King Cyrus ordered them to return home. That deliverance caused the people not to forget the Lord or his ways and within a few hundred years, the heavens were rent. They were opened. God acted on behalf of his people. He sent his son to take away people's sins. Now, if you were listening closely a few minutes ago, you probably noticed that I didn't finish the verse that I had quoted from Isaiah 53. The entire verse says, We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And... The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Iniquity means sins. God has removed our sins and laid them on Jesus. In his mercy and through Isaiah, God gave his people the hope of a Savior, just as he did through the prophets before Isaiah. And in fact, just as God himself had said all the way back in the Garden of Eden when he made that promise to Adam and Eve. So one last item here before we close this morning. Notice in our reading that Isaiah didn't complain that other people are dirty and filthy. He says here that all of us have become like one who is unclean and all of our righteous acts are like filthy rags. He's including himself here. The Apostle Paul lamented in the book of Romans, for what I do is not the good I want to, no, the evil that I do, 
that I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. So this is both an Old Testament and a New Testament issue. You know, God doesn't call us to complain about the sins of other people. You remember that even Jesus also talked about judging others and about how we're supposed to remove the log from our own eye instead of being concerned with the speck in the other person's eye. God calls us to look at our own lives and to confess our own sins. It's very easy to point out the sins that other people commit and to judge them harshly. It's a lot harder to find our own sins and to realize that our sins really deserve the same punishment. When we look at our lives, we will find sin and filth, all of us. We confess that to God. Then he tells us that he has opened the heavens wide, that he has sent his son to pay for our sins too. God doesn't want to remember our sins. He wants to forgive and forget them. He wants to mold us to his use. The description of God in Isaiah as the potter certainly fits the history of God's people. He called Abraham, for example, and then he shaped and molded his descendants into a nation. But God also molds and shapes every believer. We are the clay, he is the potter, and God molds us to the shape and for the use that he deems appropriate. We believers are the work of his hands. We pray that God will wake us up today to follow him and his ways. God is also our Father who loves us even when we wander. Sometimes he allows us to wander. Sometimes he hardens our hearts so that in the end we come to remember just how much he loves us. He is the potter. We are the clay. In his divine omniscience, that means his all-knowing providence, he molds us and our lives to his will and his ways. Sometimes his love is tough, but it's only to shape us and to bring us back to him and his loving and waiting arms. Thanks be to God for that kind of love that never fails. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We're happy that you joined us for worship today. Rev. Borglum is the pastor of St. Paul Lutheran Church in Freeman, South Dakota. Sunday morning worship is held at 9.30 a.m. with Sunday school and adult Bible classes following.
I'm Pastor Dale Satgast, the president of the South Dakota District of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, and also one of the preachers for Main Street Living. I hope that you enjoy this wonderful television ministry as we bring God's living word to you. It's our sincere prayer that through God's word, his spirit is working so that many people may know God's forgiving and saving love through the message of Jesus Christ, his death on the cross, his resurrection, and the promise of his presence with us always. There are many volunteers who give of their time and energy so that this program may be broadcast. All of the pastors volunteer their time. But there are also costs to produce and purchase airtime to broadcast this program. It is only through the generous gifts of our viewers that we can continue this ministry. If you enjoy Main Street Living and wish to help us keep it on the air, we ask that you pray for us and that you help us with your generous donations. You may send your donations to Main Street Living, 1400 South Duluth Avenue, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57105. Again, Main Street Living, 1400 South Duluth Avenue, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57105. God bless you in your walk of faith. Thank you for joining us in worship today. If you would like more information on an LCMS church in your town, please contact the district office at 3501 Gateway Boulevard, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57106, or log on to www.lcms.org. If this program has been a blessing to you, please send your comments and contributions to Main Street Living, 1400 South Duluth, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57105. We appreciate your prayers and support of this ministry. Through your continued support, we can spread the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Main Street Living is a production of Main Street Living Incorporated in conjunction with the South Dakota District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and is supported by member churches and viewers like you. Created and produced by many people interested in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Zion, your master comes to you.